Real Rising release has brought a lot of new awesome stuff. That's why I've prepared 30 most important changes that might interest you. Short and simple. This is Aiming for Gaming, and today we're aiming for a feature checking. First and foremost, if you ever thought the difficulty was too easy, try out the new Brutal mode. Bosses here have bigger health pools, higher levels and deal more damage, which I personally dislike. However, every boss now has a new move and an adjusted AI. I swear, you'll never forget the Vincent fight. If you were struggling with initial resource farming, it has been tweaked. You will get much more wood and stone from a single node, allowing you to get to battles faster, especially if you drink Walker's blood. Horses also got a small yet important change. They now consume easily obtainable fiber instead of water skins, making it easier to manage mounts early on. Speaking of consumables, they now last 60 minutes. Less crafting is always better, right? Another important quality of life addition is that after you consume a potion, you will not consume the bottle itself. Even less crafting, yay! Now you can build advanced stations. These process items faster than normal ones, have even more inventory space and more recipes. You can unlock them by defeating specific V-Blood enemies. A new era of storage has arrived with both small and large storage for literally everything, from scrolls to fish. Place these next to your stations or build a storage room for all resources at once. This feature shines even more with the addition of hotkeys that allow you to sort your inventory or quickly transfer everything by simply pressing the E key. Another huge addition is inventory highlighting. It's so much easier now to see what can be transferred to a specific storage or what you can add to an existing stack. A new source of valuables now travels around the map in the form of traveling cards. These are guarded by several soldiers, but are totally worth it. Cards come in different variants and follow the same route, so you can farm them from time to time. The new zone awaits for an infinite challenge. It does not have any base plots, but offers walled events instead. These events require you to beat two spots with enemies and one boss fight, which come in two difficulties and reward you with powerful weapons, jewels and shards. Speaking of shards, this is a new currency which you can spend on weapons, summon enemies in the new summoning circle or unlock passive buffs. There are 18 passive buffs, all unlockable once you defeat General Elena the Hollow and build an altar of Stygian Awakening. Each buff is permanent, but the cost is a lot of shards from the new zone. I recommend the passive that boosts damage against V-Blood enemies by 10%. New forged items progression makes your weapons much more viable. You can enhance your favorite ancestral weapon with various regular weapons and increase its level by 3 up to 26. For those seeking rare gear and weapons, Mir Rising offers 12 new legendary weapons with unique effects and solid stats. These can be dropped by high-level bosses or occasionally appear instead of purple weapons when you buy them for 1500 greater shots. These look really cool. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, lending your precious like would be my best reward. If you want a new battle experience, try out two new weapons, a longbow and a whip. I am currently running with a longbow on Brutal and it's amazing. The old magic progression was kind of awkward and limited, so now you can choose your own path by getting spell points and spending them as you wish. You can always reset your choice for free at the Altar of Recollection. To make your build even more flexible, check out the new sets of armor. They cover different passives and will supplement your playstyle. If you like a specific piece of gear, you can keep it in your fashion slot regardless of what you wear. And definitely try recoloring your gear. Spells heavily rely on jewels, which grant some awesome effects. The new tier 4 with 4 effects means even more power for your favorite setup. To spice it up even more, the game offers a new blood type – Draculin. This is particularly great in the new zone where you might want to bite more enemies. If you're a fan of shape-shifting, the new spider form will please you. Try hiding underground for a surprise attack without fear of the sun. Nice. If you remember bags from Gloomrot, forget about them. Now you can craft and equip only one bag at a time. The better the bag, the more it offers. More storage slots, more silver to carry and even more resource yield. Awesome! Soul shards were also reworked in the latest update. You cannot keep them indefinitely anymore as they decay over time. To restore them, you must farm the new area. V-Bloods have undergone a rework in terms of rewards to reflect new stations, spell points and craftables. To make your battles more controllable, the devs have added new aim assist. New bosses were added as well, including the mighty Dracula himself. 
I won't spoil the fight, but be prepared for the toughest battle you've ever seen in V Rising. All veils now have a leech effect to balance them out. The difference will be in additional effects and jewel features. Dying now reduces your blood pool by 10% instead of losing your precious blood completely. This is a huge change and a must for brutal mode, where you will die a lot. And finally, a couple of achievements. I love them. They give you a decent goal to achieve. Nice. I hope with this guide you have achieved what you are aiming for today. For more guides, simply visit my channel and consider subscribing. It's that easy. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.